Hey everybody and welcome back. I'm really glad that you're here with me today for our second reading lesson together. I'm Miss McDonough and I teach at Hawthorne Elementary third grade. I really miss my students and I know they miss me too. I also know that your teacher really misses you as well. Before we get started, I wanted to go back into memory lane. I recently asked my students what their favorite read aloud has been this year. And a lot of the kids said it was The Raft by Jim LaMarche. What has been your favorite read aloud that your teacher has done this year? I bet you have a hard time choosing one. We're gonna go ahead and get started on today's lesson. Yesterday, we started to explore the desert. And we practiced the reading strategy of wondering and stopping and ask questions as we read. When we wonder or stop and ask questions as we read, that allows us to think really deeply about a text and to help us to better understand what it is that we're reading. Remember, you can stop and ask questions anytime in any genre, but we're practicing the genre of nonfiction, true information about a topic, just like we did with flashy, fantastic rainforest frogs and like we started yesterday when we explored the desert. What do you remember about Explore the Desert by Kay Jackson? I'll give you some think time. Let's take a quick look back at chapter one, which was called A Dry Land, and see what we can remember about what we've learned. I remember learning that a camel can go a really long way without taking a drink, and that they also use fat stored in their humps when they need food and water or energy. I also learned that one desert, the Atacama Desert in South America, is the driest place on Earth. And what was surprising to me is that deserts can be cold or hot, like Antarctica here in yellow is a desert. I didn't know that. Today, we're going to read chapter three, Desert Animals. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to stop three times today for you to do some thinking, ask some questions, and do some wondering. I'm gonna ask you to share in your own private brain or with somebody at home, in whatever language you feel most comfortable talking with at home, but I'm also gonna add in something new today. I'm going to ask you to not only share your thinking out loud, but also to do a quick stop and jot of a question you have uh, or a wondering that you have three times throughout the chapter today. If you have the packet you, that looks like this, that has three stops, you may use that, or any blank sheet of paper and a pencil. We're not gonna worry so much about spelling. This is just about getting our thinking out about what we're reading. Are you ready? We're going to read chapter three, Desert Animals. Here we go. Chapter three, Desert Animals. Mice and tortoises are just a couple of the animals that have learned to survive in the desert. Desert bugs are fierce fighters. They have to be tough to live in the dry land. Scorpions jab or poke their prey with poisonous stingers. The stink bug shoots enemies with a smelly spray. The desert tarantula has stinging hairs on its abdomen. The abdomen is that end part of an insect or a spider. If a bird or snake gets too close, the tarantula flicks hairs into the animal's eyes and blinds it. Other desert insects are gentler. Butterflies flip between flowers. They drink the blossom's nectar. Colorful butterflies stand out in the brown desert. Let's read the caption. A tarantula, tarantula hunts small insects in the hot desert. Let's get a good look at that guy. This is going to be our first place that we're going to stop and think what questions can you ask right now? Go ahead and tell yourself in your own private brain or someone at home, and then take a minute to jot down some of the questions for stop number one. Do that now.
Welcome back. Thank you. I'm going to share with you some of the questions that my students had for stop number one. They asked, how do butterflies in the desert protect themselves? It said that they were colorful, um, so I'm wondering if that has something to do with how they protect themselves from predators. And the second question we came up with was, when a tar tarantula blinds a pre predator, is it permanent? Are they blind forever? I wouldn't want to get in that tarantula's way. What questions did you tell yourself and jot down? Were they similar or different? Let's go on to the next part of the chapter. Remember, a tarantula hunts small insects in the hot desert. Scaly, spiky, and bumpy reptiles thrive in the desert. That means they do well. They have watertight skin. Their skin doesn't sweat, so they don't lose water. Scritch, scritch. The claws of a lizard scrape against the sand. The nervous lizard scrambles toward a bush. A nearby snake slithers to a stop. The snake senses the lizard with a snap of its powerful jaws. The snake grabs the lizard and swallows it whole. A sign winding adder snake swallows a lizard in Africa's Namib Desert. Another hunter crawls along the desert floor. A Gila monster searches for a meal. The red and black lizard finds a kangaroo rat hiding beneath a bush. With quick gulps, the Gila monster gobbles up its prey. Here's that kangaroo rat. And here's the caption. When a Gila monster bites its prey, deadly venom from its jaws flows into the animal. Venom is poison. Let's stop there for a second. What questions can you ask right now? What are you curious about? Go ahead and tell yourself in your own private brain or share with somebody at home. Then jot one or two questions down in the stop number two box. Thank you and welcome back. Here are some questions that my students came up with. What are a kangaroo rat's defenses? How can it protect himself? And what other animals thrive in the desert climate? Were your questions similar or different? We're now going to read the rest of the chapter. Desert animals hunt at night. Here we go. During the hot day, Many animals hide in cool burrows, which are like underground tunnels, or under shady rocks. But when the sun goes down, desert animals come out. High above in the dark sky, a brown bat flies overhead. In the shadows, a lean coyote sniffs the air, and it catches the scent of a mouse. Let's read this caption. Coyotes hunt at night in the desert when it's cooler. From a small hole in a giant saguaro cactus, an elf owl's round eyes scan the ground below. A speckled grasshopper leaps from a bush, and in a swift dive, the tiny owl snatches the grasshopper and silently flaps back to its nest. As the sun rises, night animals go back to their nests and burrows. During the night, few animals found water, but they aren't thirsty. To live in the dry land, desert animals need very little water. Let's read this caption. It says, an elf owl peeks out from its nest in a saguaro cactus. Let's go back and read this text feature here, the field note. Scorpions are night hunters. Their size, two to three inches long. Their color, yellow-brown. Food, insects, spiders, and even other scorpions. This will be our last stop for today. What come, questions come to mind at this point in the text? Go ahead and tell yourself in your own private brain or somebody at home. Remember, you, you can use whatever language is most comfortable for you. And then go ahead and jot down in the last stop box what questions you have. Do that now.
welcome back. What did you learn today about how animals survive in the desert? What was most surprising to you? Go ahead and tell yourself or tell somebody at home. I know what was surprising to me was that a lot of the animals in the desert are really fierce, fierce hunters. I couldn't believe that some of the adaptations that these animals have, like scorpions jab with poison stingers and a tarantula can flick their hairs into other animals' eyes and blind it. That was really interesting information for me. What other questions do you still have about animals or other parts of the desert? Tomorrow we will read another chapter together and maybe some of those questions will be answered. Now it's time to transition into IDR. I'd like you to pick a really good just right book that you can find a good spot, um, comfortable spot and a spot that you think you can read for a full 20 to 25, maybe even 30 minutes today. And the strategy that I want you to practice is to every once in a while, no matter what genre it is that you're reading, is to stop and ask questions as you read. If you remember, I was just starting the Key Collection by Andrea Chang and illustrated by Yang Suk Choi. Remember, I, the first thing I did was read the back summary to get my brain ready to read. And I knew that Xiao, which means little, Jimmy's grandma Nini was going to um, maybe have to move to California. And he was really upset, upset about this and how they're going to keep their relationship. She's almost like his best friend. Then I went ahead and started reading. And I got through a few chapters and I'm going to just read one little part to you today and think aloud about a question that I have. This is before grandma has moved to California. When the mailman came, Nini was disappointed that there were no blue airmail envelopes from her brothers in Shanghai in China. But there was a letter from my dad's sister, Auntie Helen in San Francisco. Nini opened it carefully so I could have the stamps for my collection. I watched her eyes as she read the tiny characters. Chinese letters are written in characters. When she got to the end of the letter, her eyes were far away. What does it say? I asked. Nini didn't answer. I looked closely at the characters. This really got me wondering what was in that letter. What happened to make Grandma Nini's eyes go far away? That makes me wonder if it's something upsetting in the letter. And I'm wondering if she's going to explain to Xiao Jimmy um, what's going on. Is this the reason that she has to move to California? I'm going to keep reading today to find out. I'd like you to make sure that you stop and ask yourself questions and wondering as you read. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.